is the exam, right? If you're interested, I encourage you to take EE225. I hope that I can offer it again next year in fall. That's my plan uh, for introduction to quantum computing. Here is not quantum computing, only talking about superconducting electronics, SCE. This is an important topic. No quantum computing, a lot, however, lots of quantum mechanics. What is a superconductor? Right, this is figure shows the resistivity of the mercury suddenly dropped to very, very low at four point something Kelvin. I cannot read it about 100 years ago. Right, and they discovered something called superconductor. But only thing I want to tell you is that superconductor is not perfect conductor. This is very important. People think, oh, I make the resistance super low, then it's superconductor. No, it has one very important characteristic is that it's called Meissner effect. What does it mean? It always repel the electric field when the temperature is less than the critical temperature. Means when it is when the temperature is high, it's not superconductor, right? Every superconductor, like mercury here, when it is larger than four point something, is not superconductor. The magnetic field can penetrate, but for a superconductor, right? When it becomes a superconducting state, what we call superconducting state, it will repel all electric, all magnetic field. This is not the case in a perfect metal. In perfect metal, it will repel also depends on the history. For example, I'm not going to draw it because uh, I just want you to be aware of this. For example, if before it is perfect metal, you have the magnetic field penetrate. And then let's say you suddenly make it becomes a perfect metal by Maxwell equation. Magnetic field has to stay there. They cannot move. Because once they move, they are going to generate infinite current. But superconductor is that you repel the magnetic field. Okay, so that's why you cannot say, let me get a perfect conductor, then I have levitation. I can have this high speed train. No, you need to use superconductor, not perfect conductor, right? So this is the two testing for superconductor. One is Meissner effect, another is the uh, zero resistivity. And then I jump to something called Josephson Junction, right? I always like to talk about this, right? When I was in Berkeley, uh, I took the class and then the TA and I to talk about the history. Josephson was a very young guy in Oxford. I forgot Oxford or Cambridge. And he discussed this Josephson, Josephson effect. And in the in the uh, in a conference, physical annual meeting, or whatever, right? He presented his paper. And then Bardin, Bardin, Nobel Prize winner. I forgot. Uh, is he two times or one time? Right? He said you were wrong, right? But but he but he's so confident. He said, uh, don't force. Uh, uh, I mean, well, Barney say uh, criticize him, and then Joseph Sun say, no, you are wrong. Uh, uh, no, that Joseph Sun was very poor. I say I, I don't agree. Whatever. And Barney was so uh, arrogant. Said, do you think that I'm wrong? And then uh, Joseph Sun say, uh, don't force me to say that. Right? Uh, Joseph Sun proposed something called. Uh, explain this Josephson junction for Cooper pairs. But what do I want you to take from here is that something very interesting. Now you see again, a very simple structure. This is superconducting metal, another superconducting metal. And then this is insulator. Isn't that this is just like the STT ramp, right? But we use the magnetic, Metal, magnetic metal, right? So again, simplicity is important for anything, right? If you come up with something too complicated, usually it's not that useful. And that's why in superconducting electronics, people try to integrate STT RAM to it. Because one is that if you remember, STT RAM is very bad for high temperature operation because of the thermal rod noise, right? Remember what we discussed, the barrier, EB divided by KT. You want the 
EP to be high, but now at superconducting state, usually is low temperature. So I really am really stable, right? So this is, and also they have similar architecture. I did involve in some superconducting uh, stuff when I in the last two years when I was in synopsis. That's why I was so excited about this. And now they are the, they are almost done. There was a project from IAPRA. IAPRA is intellectual advanced project research agent, whatever, similar to DAPRA. They try to do something cool. Now there is a force to push for superconducting electronics. Why? Because in superconducting conducting electronics, you don't have resistivity, so no more heat loss, right? No problem about generating heat. Of course, you. this is not about energy, it's about heat generation. We need to have a refrigerator to put in superconducting state. But the point is, nowadays, if you make your transistor so fast, so great, they will be so hot and eventually melt. But for superconductor, no, just by physics, because no resistance, so no heat generation. Of course, there are other second order effects we need to pay attention to, okay? So what's so special about Josephson Junction? It is that if I apply zero voltage across it, the current is going to oscillate as long as something called phase is different. Uh, I'm sorry, I say the wrong thing. <laughs> that this phase, let's say, is constant, uh, right? Not oscillate. The phase is constant, right? You get at zero voltage, you get constant current. This is not very surprising. Think about if you have a superconductor. Do you remember all those uh, movie or what you say? You have a superconductor. You shoot a if it has a current there, the current just root forever. Because there's no resistance, so it's not going to lose energy. It just keep looping, looping, right? The only surprising thing is that, hey, my is not a superconductor. My actually have an insulator in between it. It still keep looping. It never ends, even there's an insulator. And again, can you guess what is the mechanism for the transport from the top insulator to the bottom? top superconductor to the bottom superconductor. What can be the transport mechanism? Electromagnetism or tunneling? Tunneling. Right, so we did not cover tunneling too much, but tunneling is something really important. But tunneling is what? Just quantum mechanical effect. That's why the whole thing is quantum mechanics. Okay, and what if you put a finite voltage then you are going to have a change in phase. If you change the phase, then your current is changing, okay? So the first thing is if you have zero voltage, you have constant current, right? This is not what we usually get. You put zero voltage across a resistor, of course, zero current, but no, you have constant larger than zero current. The second thing is if I put a constant voltage larger than zero, I got oscillation. This is current and this is time. I get this type of oscillation. Oh, sine wave. And the first thing you will say, wow, this is, maybe you don't know why this is important. Look at the oscillation frequency. It depends only on electronic charge and Planck's constant, the universal constant. So it means that if I do it, near the sun or on Tahoe in Europe or in the ground in a deep 1000 kilometer down in Japan or in California, I got exactly the same frequency because it all depends on this fundamental constant. It doesn't depend on how thick I am, how bad my technology it is. So this, is, this becomes a standard for measuring the frequency. Okay, this is one standard, and this is in the RF regime. Okay, another standard is that if if you have a ring, and then with a Josephson junction in between, 